I'm excited. I have my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. It just came in. I'm going to open it up. I have the 3B, um, not 3B Plus, until now. Let's have a look. The pukey green cardboard. Oh yeah, look at that. Hmm, what's in here? This this packing slip info. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. All right, let's put the box. Hmm. Anyway, let's open it up and check it out. Oh boy, nice and shiny. Hmm. Brand spanky new. Oh, weighs a little bit more than the other one does. Nice, nice, nice. A while ago, I picked up the armor case from my Raspberry Pi 3B with the dual fans, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use it. So I picked up another heatsink without the fans so it can be completely passive cooling. On Banggood's website, it said it would work with the 3B and 3B Plus version. I was skeptical though. Sure enough, there was a large gap between the Pi processor and the heatsink, even with the thickest piece of thermal tape. The thermal tape isn't even sitting properly flush with the processor and the heat sink on top. Let's see if I can bring in more light here. But as you can see, that's as best as I can get it right now, I'm trying to hold it steady. It's not worth getting this thing for your Raspberry Pi 3B as it's not going to cool it down. So it was unusable until now. Since I have the 3B Plus version of the Pi, I know this will be a great fit. There was one main issue that I wasn't impressed by. The company only put wax paper on one side of the thermal tape. This means the other side can get dirty, but mine was okay. Alright, it's time to put this thing together. And this is going to take a while. Okay, I'm going to be sticking this one to this. I guess that'll look good. Good enough anyway. Okay, to put this one down, I just want to see where it's going to end up. Okay, so it ends up right there. So that's good to go. Guess I'll deal with this one next. I would put the sticky adhesive on the other side, but if I need to remove this, it'll be easier to have their little tape uh, be removed at the same time. They didn't even finish cutting this. I don't know if this is conductive or not. I just don't want it to be anywhere else. It shouldn't be right. So this is going to go on to the pie. Like so. Just gonna leave it set like that. I'm gonna flip this thing around. I'm gonna also put it onto the pie. It's gonna sit like that. I'm gonna grab the screws and they're gonna squish it together. It's quite nice. Now this one and then this one. That's tight, that's tight, and that's tight. There we go. So now the pie is locked into that case. I'm going to uh, look through the cracks. I just want to make sure that there's no gaps in between the process or anything. That way it's actually going to send a proper heat connection to the case. Wow, I'm actually impressed. That looks pretty great. A good case to keep the pie cool and keep it protected. So I'm going to play some games, browse the internet, and we'll see what type of temperatures I get while playing around with the Pi for a bit. Okay, so it's that time to actually test this thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the desktop. I'm going to look at the uh, Wi-Fi, which I already know that it's missing one bar. Um, it is on my phone and the iPod as well. So it, the Wi-Fi seems to be just fine where I'm at. Um, I would like to use my range booster, which shows its full bars, but it says it's 5G and for some reason this thing won't connect to it whatsoever. So I'm going to play Speed Punks for the PlayStation uh, 1. And then after that, I'm going to do a little bit of searching on the internet and see what the temperatures are there. And then after that, I'm probably going to stress test this thing for five minutes, uh, see what the temperatures are like. All right, it's just loading up here. I did add a Bluetooth um, 
manager tool. Uh, this is pretty much a clean um, image from RetroPie themselves. I added the desktop, uh, just DOSBox, and that's pretty much it, and just a couple of ROMs. So it's fairly, fairly new. Nothing's really been done with it yet. So I'm using my re keypad to navigate around. So let's go to ports first and go to the desktop. Uh, the type top right hand corner will show the CPU usage and also the temperature in green. It says it's 32 so that's actually fairly good. So I'm just going to exit out of here we know it's 32. Let's go to PlayStation Speedpunks. Yeah, terminate. Use Cogsworth here. And I'm just going to do easy. I love this game. Alright. A lot of people don't like this game because of the fact that the, the way that it controls. Um, I find it's really nice. I love the drifting. Perfecto. So that's one done. So I'm going to play all four tracks and then check out the temperatures from there. So now since I finished that, I'm just going to let this load, save it, next it out. Alright, let's back out. I want to save. All right, now go to the desktop and let's see what the temperatures are on this thing. So we are sitting at 45. Wow, only 45? Feels like it's a little bit warmer than um, room temperature. You know what? I'm not even gonna bother with the browser. I'm actually gonna stress test this thing. I've already screwed around with some uh, code here so I'm gonna stress test it for uh, 300 seconds is exactly five minutes so let's see what happens so I'm just gonna leave it like this for five minutes and then go from there well I just finished up my um, five minute time here and it seems that it's still running roughly about 57 okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm having a little bit of issues getting this thing to uh, go anything higher than about 56. I'm going to leave it run for 10 minutes. So I've got stopwatch running. This thing is going to be running at 100 and it is. All right, and then go from that. Well, uh, it's 442 in to this so far and it's sitting at 58 degrees. It's slowly going up to 60. Well, I am now seven minutes in and it's at 59 to 58 it won't go any higher than that so far yeah, as you can see it's just bouncing back and forth in between that alright so I am almost at 10 minutes and as you can see it isn't oh it finally just hit 60 10 minutes at 100% and it should stop any second here there it just finished so uh, oh look at that it just bounced right down to 50 it's going down again let me just hold it it's warm Ooh, it's actually a little bit more than warm how about the bottom part of it? I feel the bottom. So the bottom is actually quite warm as well. That's a good heat sink. Look at that. It's down to 49 because I'm holding it. What happens if I just put a little bit of air on it? at 47 46 okay well I gotta admit this is a really really nice case and I recommend it I really do nice and solid 
it's not affecting the Pi. Wow. So I was in the middle of editing and I forgot to move my camera. So I was in the middle of uh, showing the Wi-Fi, but it was hidden all behind the camera. So let's just move you out of the way first. And then, there we go. Now you're out of the way. I can actually now show off the Wi-Fi. So I'm connecting to connected to one of my modems right now. There is one bar missing. Uh, the other one has one bar missing too. They're both the same modems. Yes, I have two lines in this house uh, because my internet does suck really bad. I do have a Wi-Fi booster. Um, for some reason, it won't connect to it, period. I have no idea. But um, I guess maybe the Raspberry Pi just can't connect to 5G booster. I don't even know if it's even 5G. It just says it's 5G here. I don't know, something that Talos gave me for free, and it seems to work pretty good, but not for the Pi. Um, for my mobile devices, um, also my internet is um, has lost one bar. So let's just open up the browser here. I'm going to go to a slow website, I guess MSN, msn.com. It's probably going to go to Canada version. Yep, that's the yeah. And that actually loaded fairly quick. That's not bad at all. Okay, so I'm going to shut down the Pi. And I guess I'm going to take one of my monitors out of here and I'm going to stick it in the shed. I'm going to take the Pi with me. Because I know with the other Raspberry Pi here, when I had this thing in the shed, I was doing a battery bank test for the pocket juice. Um, I literally had no signal whatsoever, and I was barely able to even get to the internet. I'd be lucky if I had it for a couple of seconds, so. With this armor case on, on the 3B+, Plus, and if it gets internet out there, that's pretty amazing. Uh, so I guess I'm going to take my monitor and head her out there. I'm going to use my camera for this part. It's not every day that I'd be packing my monitor and stuff out into the shed. Just the test, if the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus actually has Wi-Fi with this heat sink. <laughs> oh boy. All right, let's have a look at my Wi-Fi. Right now it is showing that I have one bar. If we actually click on it here. Uh, one bar one bar and my range booster is missing only one bar oh yeah actually the internet's all going back up to two bars hmm all right anyway let's see this thing will load google google.com enter hmm this is extreme test though, because I know this area is a dead spot. Yeah, Google can't be reached. I wonder. I wonder if it would work if I'm a human antenna. Let me hold this thing up. Will you load Google now? Let's stop and hit refresh. Being a human antenna gonna work? It's just spinning. Okay, move it out just past the camera a bit. We got Google. Well, we definitely got a dog barking out here. Refresh, come on. You can do it. I believe in you. It's not good um, at a distance away from your internet. Oh, holy crap. It actually worked. Nice. But that took a while. That was quite a bit of work just to get okay, Google. How about YouTube? I really doubt this is going to load. YouTube is such a hog and oh my god, is it actually going to load? It's loading. No way. It's loading and I'm at a stupid distance away from my modem. It's, it's definitely unusable. But <laughs> that's still pretty impressive to where I'm at in my yard. Alright, anyway. I guess it works. For those that want to see how far my internet is, it's from that corner, and I was going to that location. Mm 
Now with the case and the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, they both weigh at 154 grams. That's 0 0.33 pounds. I can even fit the Raspberry Pi back into its box for when I don't want to use it. Overall, I'm impressed. I recommend this heat sink. I'll give it 8 out of 10. The reason being is the thermal tape problem. I do not recommend it for the Raspberry Pi 3B, just the 3B Plus. If you do have the Raspberry Pi 3B, I recommend getting the armor case with the dual fans. Use that one. I hope you liked the video. Please do rate and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.